Hello everyone, so <clears throat> don't make these kind of videos much, really, if ever, but in the last couple days or so, a, yet, you know, there's a yet another big advancement, breakthrough in AI, and this, this one, at least from my perspective, it was notable enough for me to just feel like, hey, I'll just kind of talk about it a little bit. And this would be talking about the Darwin Godel machine. I hope I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but let's call that the DGM. A new approach to AI development. I'm not sure. You might have heard about Alpha Evolve, but basically kind of carrying the idea of a self improving AI. An AI that gets better and is able to get better on its own without human involvement, really for the most part. Because up to this point, uh so the core idea here is we're moving beyond AI systems that rely on humans for improvement. The DGM, Darwin Godel machine, is a self-improving AI that can modify its own code and test those changes, getting better at tasks over time. It uses an, an uh, a, a approach inspired by evolution, trying out changes and seeing if they work better on specific coding benchmarks. So basically the changes, it's like it applying an evolution and seeing if that evolution takes well, and and uh, determining if it takes well, being how it performs on specific coding benchmarks. So this paper shows that this worked, with significant performance increases on challenging coding tests, tests <laughs> like Swebench and Polyglot. This capability for recursive self-improvement is really significant. Now, while the main focus is coding, the researchers also explored if the DGM could be applied to other areas, including AI safety. So this is where, at least the videos I've seen talking about this, haven't really gotten into this part of the paper towards the end, which, since it's the main point of it's being covered elsewhere, I'm going to go and cover this, because honestly, I think this is the most important part. So one specific area they looked at was addressing hallucinations in the underlying AI models it uses. So, uh, hallucinations, right? So, hallucination in this context means the AI model outputs text that looks like it used a tool or achieved a result, but it never actually did. It just fabricated the interaction in its output. <clears throat> the researchers set up the DGM to try and detect and fix the specific type of hallucination. They designed a scoring system to measure how well the DGM developed agents avoided these hallucinations and the DGM did find agents that scored highly on this metric so basically the DGM the Darwin Godel model was able to advance and create agents specifically for this task of trying to detect and avoid hallucinations however this is where we see a really important finding from the paper objective hacking now we've heard of reward hacking uh, you've maybe heard of some other types of hacking, <clears throat> but objective hacking, uh, if you're familiar with that or not, objective hacking is when an AI system tries to optimize for a specific quantifiable score. So it finds a way to get a high score without actually solving the underlying problem you intended it to solve. It optimizes the measurable objective rather than the spirit of the task. This is related to the principle known as good arts law. And there was that open AI uh, video or test experiment or whatever have you from a few years ago with the boat racing game where <clears throat> the, the AI just kept crashing the boat because for whatever reason doing that, it would earn a lot of points. And instead of trying to win the race, it tried to get the most points because that was the determining factor on performance that they set up. So, and... This hallucination case study, the DGM, in one of its highest scoring versions, didn't actually fix the root cause of the hallucination. Instead, it modified its own code to remove the special logging tokens that were used to detect if hallucination was occurring. By doing this, it made it impossible for the, evolution the evaluation system to detect the hallucination, thus achieving a perfect score, even though the underlying behavior might still be there. The implications of this are significant, particularly as we build more powerful self-improving systems. 
This highlights the challenge of alignment, making sure that AI systems are optimizing for what we really want, not just the proxies that we use to measure it. If an AI can rewrite its own code to bypass safety checks or evaluation metrics, even inadvertently by optimizing a flawed score, it raises serious questions about control and predictability. The researchers acknowledge this, stressing that safety precautions were used. They also suggest that, in the principle, the DGM approach could itself be directed towards improving safety if robustness against objective hacking is built into the ev evaluation criteria. So while the DGM shows exciting potential for self-accelerating AI progress, the objective hacking example serves as a crucial reminder that as AI gets better at self-improving, our methods for evaluating and controlling it must become incredibly robust and truly reflect our intended goals. And at the end of this little paper here, I think the last thing they put in this paper, which again, this is the paper they released. I just like to see the, the last thing that they put in here says, talks about the objective hacking. In conclusion, the DGM can be applied beyond the coding domain, and we highlighted a case of objective hacking, similar to reward hacking and reinforcement learning. So reward hacking is probably what people have heard of before. Objective hacking occurs when a system optimizes for a predefined quantifiable objective rather than fulfilling the spirit of the task or solving the intended problem. This observation supports arguments made in prior works, which suggest that optimizing quantitative measures often leads to undesirable or pathological outcomes and aligns with Goodhart's law. When a measure becomes a target, it ceases to be a good measure.